So product renders, um, HDRI versus softbox. Uh, before I jump into 3D, HDRI versus softbox. These are two very popular methods to create product renders. So I'm going to show you how to set up a scene using both those methods and also show you how to tackle some of the difficulties that come with those two methods. HDRI environments. So the pro here is the ease of setup. It is very, very easy to set up and it's almost render ready right off the bat. In fact, most probably in a lot of the cases, you can just load an HDRI and go. The con is that some find it difficult to align the HDRI lighting to where you want highlights on the object. It is very good at giving you a good overall global illumination but in terms of highlights um, and manipulating the position of the, those highlights it can be a little bit of a, a trick but i'll show you how to work around that now and then the second con is finding the right hdri and finding an hdri that does what you want it to do so product rendering with an hdri now i've just opened a new copy of blender and i'm gonna link my product i'm not gonna append it um, for the simple reason that if i do link it it's gonna give me a lot more control um, across multiple scenes so if i have this in my scene um, and doing a product render but i've also got it in another scene in its environment showing the way that it'll be used i want to be up, able to update the master file and update only one file whether that's textures or materials or shaders or anything that influences um, and update it only once across files now if you haven't uh, used linking before it's not daunting just file um, link select your file and then if ever you need to reload that link because it broke for some reason you can come up here and then hit blender file and this will give you all the linking data you'll be able to right click on it and either reload it if you've made a change or relocate it so that's that for bringing the product in now, setting up a HDRI studio um, is simply going into the world tab, hitting color and choosing environment texture. So you want an environment texture that is similar to a studio, um, ideally. Um, and I want one where I get a bit of variety in light from left and right. Um, so I can see on this HDRI there'll be a floor, um, probably like a prop floor or an infinity plane. Um, there'll be a key light at the top and then there'll be either a key and a full light left and right. So that kind of looks like something that'll give me a studio-like shoot. It'll mimic more or less what will happen with a camera in a studio. So I've got that HDRI in view. If I hit Z and rendered. Um, it'll show me what's happening in the scene, which is really grand off right off the bat. Um, it, it really is. Um, so just putting a camera into this. So another little trick, if you come into your render properties, um, rather your output properties, you've got all these render presets. Now I can see that a square preset is going to work for me at this point. So I'll take a square preset and hit 50% quality just to speed things up. Um, that's a nice place to save your all your outputs. You can see I've got an Instagram render set up and I've got um, print resolution A3 and A4 and pretty much everything else set up here. So go and set that up for yourself. Do yourself a favor um, and just never worry about it again you can see that's looking fairly good right off the bat but i want to be able to change the location and position of this hdri right now you can see there's a massive key light 
um, at the back light here from the side and then your prop table slash infinity over here and I do want to rotate that and play with my lighting position a bit I'm going to do that by adding a mapping node and then adding a texture coordinate node and I'm going to link that texture coordinate node to an empty and the empty will control the position of the HDRI in the scene so the way to do that is this Let's add my mapping node connect vector to vector and then add texture coordinates and connect object to vector and right now it's looking for object to reference so in my scene I'm gonna have to do um, an empty because they work quite well um, just because it is already an empty in the scene linking that I'm gonna name this empty uh, just so that I can see that in screen so I'm gonna call it texture coordinate um, and that'll prevent any kind of confusion so now I can select that texture coordinate and if I zoom out you'll see that if I rotate that empty um, it's going to take the HDRI with it um, and immediately the lighting is already looking better um, now you can incrementally go and rotate it and find a position on the HDRI that actually works well for you but that's it that's how you rotate an HDRI in your scene now obviously when you save this file out you've rendered it you want to save it out um, you can come into your render output um, hit film and then just hit transparent background and when you render that now it'll give you a transparent background softbox one of the pros here probably the biggest pro is that it mimics an actual shoot scenario like you would shoot with a camera into a light tent um, and for that reason it'll give you very very good and very studio like renders the quality will be really great the con is that a softbox uh, when you make it with geometry in your 3d program as well as using different planes which are also geometry and you place them around your scene it's very easy to obscure your camera and you need to manage your geometry in a way that it will not interfere with what the camera sees and I'll show you how to do this in a second so softbox setting up a softbox environment before I go uh, get going um, ultimately I want to recreate what a light tent does in a product shoot so when I'm looking at a light tent like that or like that or that or that what I see is a hot spot or very focused light on the side and then a little bit of a bleed off and a fall off in lighting on towards the edges and that's what gives me very nice reflectant reflections it's a variance between the 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 bright and a little bit of dark around that so i'm going to try and emulate that in 3d um, as before just link my screwdriver that i've got my model um, and then set up a soft box so now i've got this in my scene same as before i can set up a camera just to get it in view hit control zero and then just switch to cycles and switch to a square format again um, and G Z Z to get it in full frame probably lift the camera up a bit um, and then rotate it on the x-axis a little bit just to get a full frame so now when I'm going to create a softbox I'm essentially doing out of uh, 3d objects or geometry so the catch here as I mentioned earlier is it is very easy for 3d geometry to start obscuring your camera so that's one thing that one needs to be aware of um, as you can see here I'm not even seeing my my camera at the moment so I will need to edit this a little bit and bring it out past my camera so for that reason i always work in one viewport in wire um, and that i normally do here top view and this one i'll just work as is to see 
what is going on so what happens now is i will put um or create a softbox material um and i'll just use a emission let me put my let's just use this one um, and then plug that into emission i now have my softbox cube in the scene and what I'm going to find is that its normals are facing the wrong way. Um, to confirm that, I can just come down here and hit geometry face orientation. If I see blue, the normals are facing out. If I see red, the normals are facing in. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode, select all the faces, um, and then just hit shift N and recalculate the normals until I see blue. So now the normals are all in the right orientation and I can just unwrap this cube. I want all these edges to be seams um, as I want to just unwrap an entire face onto that image. So now I'm successfully emulating a softbox and I should get a pretty decent result already, although it does look a bit flat. So I'm going to start adding geometry as um, just as highlights and rim lights. And I've got a nice um, little ridge on the model over here and I want some highlighting on that and also maybe some rim lighting on here and maybe on there so i'm going to start by just duplicating this material um, and i make a different instance of it because i'll want it to be a little bit stronger than the softbox material um, and then i can start adding my highlight planes I'm just going to position it away from the model to start picking up that highlight and then assign that second softbox material to it. I can already see um, it's picking up that ridge quite well. So I'm going to accentuate that a little bit, maybe not that much. Um, but now it is obscuring the camera and it will do so in the view as well. And the way to deal with that is I normally do two things. I give it a nice handle um, that will identify it in the scene and it is visible in the viewport. Um, to do that, I can, I can just give it a name and make that visible in the viewport. And that will make selection a whole lot easier um, when I turn off its camera visibility. Um, and that I will do over here and untick camera. So now when I'm in wire mode, I can see my highlight here. But when I'm in render mode, I will see the highlight without seeing the plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that plane um, and also move one towards the back like that. And that will just pop my my product off the background quite well. So you can see how nice and diverse this is in terms of just hand placing highlights. I mean, you can you can really go ballistic uh, with your with your highlights um, and rim lights on on this. And again, here um, I'll just want a soft rim light, so I'll duplicate that um, and just call it rim light and then bring that down quite a bit just to not overpower the model um, and now when i want to render out typically when i render something for a client it's a png on a transparent background so i will have to select my softbox and do exactly the same for it make it not visible to the camera um, and then make sure that under film um, i have transparent background checked um, and that should give me a nice png without a background 
cool so there you have it if you like this subscribe give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video